Television Network presents Jim Baker. Praise the Lord. See the things that she has done. Heritage USA, an all-exclusive Christian theme park of the past, a once promising, prominent, and ever-flourishing park, ravaged by scandal and hush money. This is the story of the gone but not forgotten theme park of the past. To really understand what Heritage USA was, you must understand what the PTO Club was and who the Bakers were. Now, we could go on and on about the controversial life and times. However, we focus on theme parks here, so let's go from there. PTL, or Praise the Lord, was a television ministry ran by the Bakers, ultimately the business label for all the controversial decisions ahead. Now, onto the park. It all began in 1978, when television evangelist and preacher Jim Baker, alongside his wife Tammy Faye, officially opened Heritage USA, an all-exclusive Christian theme park, a quote-unquote special place for God's people. Located in Fort Mill, South Carolina, the original idea of the park featured a few things live satellite broadcast of all PTL Club episodes, a worship center, tennis courts, campgrounds, and small activities for families. As the PTL Club continued to grow, broadcasting to billions across the globe, Heritage USA expanded as well, bringing in over 5 million guests each and every year well into the 1980s. Which way to Heritage USA? Yeah, like I heard they got like a water park, water slides, everything the whole bit. <laughs> Not a dude, so which way? Really? Yo, partner, which way to Heritage USA? We're looking for the Heritage Grand Hotel. Little Philly Roki and finally tied the knot. We heard the honeymoon place was so romantic. No matter where you're from or what you like to do, if you're looking for fun, excitement, or just relaxation, ask somebody how to get to Heritage USA. By the mid-1980s, the park had seen so much success, now featuring theatrical shows across the park, a major amphitheater outdoors, the new Grand Heritage Resort Hotel, and a $12 million water park that featured two 52-foot slides, a few pools, and at the time, the world's largest wave pool. The park was such a success, it was dubbed Christian Disneyland. Walt Disney was one of the greatest creative men in our history. And if you want to compare this to Disney World, that's a compliment. It's Heritage USA will continue to add more to do throughout the 1980s, including tram services for guests, a small train ride around the water park for families, a carousel, tents full of amusement park games for children, horse and other pet stables, and a major Disney-style castle in the middle of the park. Founder Jim Baker would go on to call the park a vacation with inspiration, as the park kept growing to the mid and late 1980s, adding a brand new, smaller castle called the Upper Room, where the Bakers would make appearances from time to time, as other guests would use the area as a prayer building. One of the final additions to Heritage USA was a mega resort located right behind the Grand Heritage, a multi-story behemoth where PTL club members could donate $1,000 to help build the hotel and upon opening, would receive three days within the theme park as a reward. All was well within PTL and Heritage USA, with the tenants going through the roof each year, a consistent cash flow, and positive publicity. Everything was just fine for the Bakers, until it wasn't. In 1986, the Charlotte Observer released a series of articles accusing Heritage USA owner and founder Jim Baker of misleading viewers and members for years, as documents surfaced from the FCC. Baker would go on to deny these claims and try to continue on as if nothing had happened. It would only be one year later, in 1987, when Jim and Tammy Faye Baker would officially leave the BTL Club for good. People standing with us all over and saying, Jim, we do forgive you. We forgive Jim and Tammy of all of their sins. And we're so thankful that God has forgiven us. We don't know what the future holds, but I can assure you, Jim and Tammy someday will be helping people again. That same year, longtime evangelist friend, president of Liberty University, Jerry Falwell, would be given the keys of the castle and was tasked to try and save PTL and Heritage USA. 
The plan of bankruptcy and revival ultimately backfired as the court denied Chapter 11 requests made by Falwell. I'm, I'm ready. Go for it. Go for I'm it. ready. Heritage USA was rocked by the news in 1986 and 87. Construction on the new mega hotel came to complete halt. Renovations paused and attendance was now in steep decline. PTO members who had made the contributions towards the new hotel would eventually sue PTO, settling out of court for around $6.36 received by each buyer. By 1989, the Falwell plan had become a total disaster. Jim Baker was sentenced to prison and Hurricane Hugo had ravaged the park. In addition, it was revealed P. Tail and Heritage owed a staggering $72 million in debt. Unable to make payments, the P. Tail Club and Heritage USA was closed for good in the middle of 1989. Heritage USA would go and sit cold and alone for a couple of years. However, revival plans of the park did begin in 1990. As San Diego evangelist Morris Sorello purchased all of Heritage and P. Tail at a bankruptcy court for $52 million. With plans for a total relaunch, Sorello business partners would eventually pull out of the deal in disagreements of the pricing plans in the park. However, not all was lost for the once popular park. In 2006, Morningstar Ministries purchased over 50 acres, about twice the area of Chicago's Millennium Park, of land where the park once sat, including the Grand Heritage Resort and the never-opened Mega Hotel. Since then, the ministry will allow for some guests and press to tour the area. In addition to other attractions, the never-opened King's Castle What's intended for indoor go-karts and more began to be demolished in 2013. One last memory of Heritage USA is the upper room, as mentioned earlier. It was used as a place for prayer. A smaller castle-type building is now the only piece still in use from Heritage USA as a private ministry occupies the building. As of 2023, what is left of the former Heritage USA land is either still occupied by Morningstar or has been refurbished as an area for neighborhood and apartment complexes. As for the future, that is up in the air. For remains of the park is ever decaying and left alone, with only time to tell. Despite everything, in the end, Heritage USA wasn't a flashy roller coaster or mouse infested park as some others were. It offered something different to a specific individual. Nevertheless, millions of people still were able to visit and enjoy what was once Heritage USA.